Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming for this inaugural public lecture. We want to welcome each one of you who are here physically and our online participants. We would like to request that you allow us 10 minutes to allow the chief guest and a few dignitaries to be seated. So kindly stay logged on for at least 10 more minutes before we start. So everyone here physically, karibu sana.
a national anthem. Then thereafter, we'll do the opening prayers. So I wish to invite the team in charge to all of us, let's uh, be upstanding. Then we'll have the national anthem. Stand. Thank you. Let's be seated. I now want to invite uh, my colleague, Dr. Ansarigo, to lead us with the opening prayer. Okay, thank you. Let's all put our minds into prayer. God in heaven, we thank you and we praise you because you are the most high. We thank you that you've given us lives today in this beautiful morning as we are trying to build our nation in this way. God, I pray that uh, all the speakers of today, may you guide them through the program and let every one of us who is attending this meeting to gain something. God will not forget to ask for forgiveness where we've gone wrong, may your will be done in our lives. God, we pray that may your will be done always. For I've prayed this, trusting and believing in your holy name. Amen. Uh, thank you, Dr. Onsarigo. I'll now take this opportunity to invite our CEO to kick up the program from you. Welcome, sir. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kiroi. Uh, our principal uh, secretary, uh, State Department for Education and Research, uh, Dr. Bitu Senyangala, uh, ably represented here by Dr. Uh, Gideon Kivengea, uh, Dr. Kevin Desai, our, the reason that we are here, our distinguished uh, keynote uh, speaker, uh, the chairperson of the Presidential Working Party on Education Reforms, uh, Professor Rafael Monavu, whom uh, we believe is online or joining online, uh, board members of NACOSTI and board members from other institutions present in person and virtually, uh, including the board members of the National Research Fund and the board members of COTDA, uh, with whom we are jointly organizing this activity, members of the high-level panel uh, on science, technology, and innovation, uh, which has been initiated by NACOSTI, also ably represented in person here by our eminent person, uh, Professor David Somme, uh, CEOs of NRF, CEO of CODA, and other CEOs who are with us in person and virtually. Uh, I've seen uh, online, uh, joining online is Professor Laila of uh, Technical University of Kenya. Uh, thank you very much, Prof, uh, and others who, are, who have joined us. Uh, invited guests, uh, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Yeah, it is indeed a, a great day uh, for Nakosti for this inaugural event, uh, which has taken quite some time uh, to organize. And uh, for this, I really want to thank uh, the board of Nakosti 
uh, for the support that you have given us as management all this time. There are a lot of things happening in the science, technology, innovation sector, uh, which we believe that the stakeholders in this sector will, will harness and take advantage of. Uh, I will not say much uh, for today. Maybe we'll say more during the upcoming uh, multi-sector conference, which is scheduled for next week at Safari Park, which we also invite all of you uh, to come in person and virtually. Uh, it, it will be an interesting one, and the keyword there is uh, multi-sectoral. Yeah, for today, this event uh, is one of the, the first one of uh, upcoming events in the, in, the, in the near future. We intend to host it monthly on topical issues that affect the public and affect uh, this country. So on this time of, for today, we have the key topic of whole government approach, which I think His Excellency mentioned recently, that is a co-plank of his government, that we must work together, multi-sectoral, multi-agency, call it, use whichever name, so that we move out of the silo. And we are very pleased to have Dr. Kevin Desai, whom I think his CV speaks for itself. I think it speaks for him. He's currently, if you allow me just to give a brief on him, he's currently uh, the Managing Director and CEO of Centurion Systems Limited, uh, which he has harnessed for quite a long time. I think when I was in my other life at Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture, he gave a very exciting lecture to our students, engineering students there, and we still remember it up to now. He's a former uh, Principal Secretary State Department for East African Community, and also a former Principal Secretary uh, in the, in the uh, State Department for, for Tibet, I uh, think education. In addition to being the founder of Century on Systems Limited, he's also the founding chairman of linking industry with academia. This has been a great initiative, an initiative of his own kind, uh, for which he's well known for. Uh, he has he took a sabbatical leave to undertake the national duties as peers, but he has assured me that he's now moving back to be able to bring this sector back on board. Uh, at this particular point in time, uh, we talk of it goes beyond the university industry. Uh, collaboration, people talk of the triple helix collaboration, which involves uh, the private sector, the university, the industry. But the latest one that I think we have found out is called the, they use the word Kuntipo, I don't even know how to pronounce it, Kuntipo helix approach, which involves the local communities also and the environment in which we are working with. That is a kind of sector that we hope uh, we can tap into. Uh, for those of you who have seen the schematic representation of the STI uh, system. It has three subsectors: the regulatory sector and the political sector. Then they have the education research sector. Then the business and industrial sector. All these sectors are meant to work together to come up with uh, something delivered at the end. And for those of us who come from the university sector and even the research institutions, I think it's now a strong requirement that whatever research we do, whether basic research, even if it takes time, we need to account for it at the end of the pipeline that for every one shilling that the National Research Fund gave you for research, it has come up with a product or a service at the end of the pipeline. So that, that is uh, what Liwa, I think, uh, was meant to, to do. Uh, it's a great initiative and we hope uh, Dr. Kevit will proceed with it. He has also been the council chairman of Technical University of Mombasa and chairman of the Board of Governors of Current Technical Training Institute for the Deaf. Chairman of the Board of Young Scientists Kenya, of which Nakosti we are also a member. This has been an active one. And I think the patron of uh, Young Scientists Kenya is none other than His Excellency, the President of the Republic. He has been the Chairman of the Board of Trustees at the United States International University, Africa, uh, a member of uh, the Steering Committee in JICA Master's Degree and Internship Program uh, of the Africa Business Initiative. Uh, 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 for the youths. He, he served as a governor, director, and CEO of Kenya Private Sector Lance Kepsa. This also, uh, uh, Dr. Kevit, is a missing link in the entire STI sector. Whatever we do, the industry has a different approach. And we were thinking of what language do we need to use to be able to bring the industry on board, especially for research institutions, for universities, for Tibet institutions. How does the industry pick up what the universities have so done? A lot of researches have been done. A good number of them go to Nairobi show or other exhibitions. They win awards, but after that, the pickup is, 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 is very, very slow. So we hope that this will be among the first steps in bringing the industry on board. And uh, we pray that you'll be a key player. Uh, you have just done a great feat. I think you have, well, for, just for information, if you allow me, you have just uh, been in touch with our eminent uh, 
Dr. Manu Chandaria to grace our occasion at the multisector conference. And we are very grateful that you grace that occasion either in the opening or in the closing ceremony. So we are very, very grateful. I wouldn't want to take much time so that uh, uh, the, the main event can, can pick up. But before uh, we invite the, the, the chief guest, allow me to invite the representative of the high level panel, who is also a member of the presidential work Party on Education Reform, Professor David Some. I think we all know him, but he will introduce himself. Uh, Prof, welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Walter. Walter and I, in another life, <laughs> worked at the Commission for University Education. Um, Dr. David Desai, um, we've worked with him for a very long time. Um, some of the things I know about him is that industry runs on what he does. So that's really very encouraging. Uh, KEPSA was an area where we would like our training institutions to collaborate a lot more. But this morning, let me just say, um, I'm pleased to be here. I laid the foundation stone for this building uh, when I was the chair of uh, National Council of Science and Technology, the precursor to Nauna Kosti. Incidentally, also, I chaired the team that baptized uh, National Council to Nakosti, we actually created three organs of the higher education, what's called TAHES, the Task Force on Higher Education Science and Technology. We separated research into Nakosti, we separated universities into Q, um, and we separated Tibet into Tibet. So um, my, my request for a take home in this high level panel in research is really something that has been bothering me first in the, in the university sector, but I think now in the third year sector in general. What are our metrics? How do we know Kenya is researching? How do we know SOME is researching? How do we know you are researching? So we need to come up with metrics. And I think, Nakosti, you have a challenge. Okay? We say in Tibet, we don't research. We innovate. So what are the metrics for innovation? We say in training, which is universities, and Tiveta, we graduate. And we have powers to guess whether the certificate you have is genuine. And we can do it from all over the world. So we want the metrics for research. We want metrics for innovation. And I think as we go forward, we hope this is where we, we can reach. <clears throat> Sometimes I look at somebody's CV and says, I have done eight publications. But you've been teaching for 20 years. Okay, so you know the metrics then is one in every two years or so. So those are very bad metrics compared to other countries. So let's move forward that way. And I hope, uh, Gavid, um, we need to integrate training, be it TVET, research in the institutions with industry. So that industry, um, research industry training institutions is critical. If you go to countries like um, Korea, you actually see the top companies working with institutions, not just at the university, even at very young, young age, people who are in, in schools, they're encouraged to see what it means to be a company of that country and what it needs when you grow up to grow that company. So I, I wish every one of you this uh, first conference, let's keep on talking so that uh, if there's anything we miss out, we can do so in the second time. Thank you very much. Yeah, let's give him a more intense uh, applause. Uh, Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. You always remain a, a pillar in this sector, and uh, you have uh, a track record in both at the Commission for University Education and the Science and Technology sector. Yeah, allow me just to acknowledge, I think, as I said, about uh, 400 and over 490 had registered uh, despite the very short time, and you can see the logging on is going, uh, going, in, uh, going on, about 190, 191, I think, uh, online, uh, plus those ones who are here, and I think, Dr. Kevin, that shows the the value proposition that uh, the audience ex expects from you. Uh, also, allow me to acknowledge uh, my board members who are online. Uh, 
uh, feel welcome and feel welcome to interject at any point to uh, give direction. Uh, allow me also to acknowledge other high level member, uh, high level advisory panel members who are online. Uh, the high level advisory uh, panel members include uh, retired veterans, uh, Professor uh, Crispus Kiamba, Professor David Some, Professor Mabel Limbuga, Professor Mwanya, uh, our predecessor, Professor Shaukat. And I think that this is just the, the initial tentative team. And as the sector moves on, I think the private sector will be involved in, the other uh, ministries, MDS, will also be involved in. So also members of the high level panel, we request you to be the lead discussants and our board members also lead discussants. So you can, after Dr. Kevin's presentation, you can pick up on any area uh, to assist uh, us in, in, in the discussions and also for those who are present. So also my fellow moderators, uh, two CEOs that we've been working in very closely for this event and also for the upcoming uh, multi-sector conference uh, uh, is the CEO of the National Research Fund for Sandala. I think we joined uh, NRF just a few months ago, but has made quite some difference. And also the acting CEO of CODA, uh, 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 Mr. John Paul Query. Uh, in case they are online, uh, just wanted to check if they are online. I know they are online on and off. If uh, Prof. Sandala or uh, Mr. Query you're online, you can... Uh, have you given them the rights to... Yes, the online. Yes, so you can now, uh, Professor Andala, say some remarks, please, and then uh, Engineer John Paul. Thank you. Uh, thank you, DG. Uh, the chief guest, who's the uh, PS, uh, State Department of Higher Education Research, uh, have been represented by Mr. Kivengia. Uh, the board members, uh, fellow CEOs, uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, this occasion is auspicious in the sense that uh, we as scientists or researchers have not had time to share our experiences. And uh, the reason why we are having this uh, public lecture series is to engage uh, Kenyans and more specifically upcoming researchers to know what has been happening in that sphere. I wish to reiterate that we've uh, chosen Kevin Desai as our uh, to, to kickstart us off on this public, pu public lecture series for the sole reason that he's been in the field for quite a while. And I also had a chance to interact with him when he was uh, heading Liwa. I'm a beneficiary and uh, we've uh, worked with him that long journey. So on my part, I wish to promise that those who we funded uh, uh, through NRF, they'll be coming also to be listened to through this public lecture series. Uh, we'll make it monthly as the DG has mentioned. So if we call upon you to come and give a public lecture on what you uh, on what your research is, I'll really, really uh, be happy that you're able to uh, to give us an impact of what you've done because uh, we've had so many people funded and they've not had a chance to uh, give us uh, or to present what they've done. We'll also be partnering with industry. Uh, we'll also have lectures from industries. Uh, this is in line with the entrepreneurial universities. We need to have industries working together with the, the universities to be able to commercialize any innovations that are coming out of the universities. Finally, I'm calling upon the researchers who are on, we are building consortiums, and more specifically, we are having Horizon Europe coming soon. So in that case, we are collecting a database of researchers that we can able to pull together to be able to attract funding. Thank you. Back to you, DJ. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. I think let's also give him a clap uh, for that uh, important information. So I think the sector is moving on and up to us to figure out how to take advantage of the opportunities uh, that are there. Uh, I've seen Madam Josephine uh, on behalf of CODA, but also the CEO is online. So, Mr. John Paul, are you able to give some remarks or is it uh, Josephine? Does he have the panelist rights? Yes. Let's wait for him. 
is there. So John Paul, the acting CEO of uh, Corda. As you are aware, Corda is, uh, is a great center. I think we are heading the digital transformation into the digital economy. Yeah, unmute, unmute, unmute. Unmute, please, and then uh, you can you may proceed. Okay. Yeah, just swim, please. Welcome. Okay, thank you very much, and uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Josephine Dambuki, uh, Chief Manager of Business Development and Innovation at Konza Technopolis. Uh, I think uh, you'll allow me to make some remarks on behalf of our CEO. Uh, our acting CEO will be joining uh, as a as the web, as the uh, webinar continues, so I think for us uh, we are happy that this is happening. And uh, at Kwanza, we believe that uh, uh, we are here to catalyze innovation, and we leverage the quadrupohelix approach, uh, which is really what this uh, webinar today uh, espouses: that uh, government, uh, private sector, academia, and uh, development agencies and the citizens all come together to advance research, but also with the focus on uh, commercialization. So really, uh, Konza Technopolis as a Vision 2030 uh, project was set out to be the place where uh, this research then finds life and becomes uh, new products and new developments or initiatives that can actually uh, 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 deliver economic transformation for the country. And therefore, for us, as we join this webinar, we join as a place of, uh, of action, the place where uh, that research can then find its way can start finding its way as commercial development and solutions that uh, find uh, solutions and power this country. Uh, just to mention that at Konza, we are developing a, a postgraduate research and innovation university, uh, Kenya Advanced Institute of Science and Technology. And this is a university that has a focus on uh, research for commercialization. And again, as we see that uh, all the research work that is currently being done in the country, how can we then uh, provide a place where then that uh, we can start experimenting, piloting product solutions that then uh, really power our country and begin creating innovations uh, that uh, become perhaps the next big companies and corporations in the sector. And so we are happy to be here. We will be coming um, every time uh, because this speaks really very well to the uh, the key focus areas for Konza Technopolis. On behalf of Konza, I know many of our colleagues are joining. Uh, we want to say that uh, we celebrate the the, 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 the the movement and the focus, and we will be here to advance and support the discussions as they come. Thank you very much, uh, Adiji. We are happy to be here, and uh, we look forward to working together for the next sessions. Thank you. Thank you. Let us give uh, Josephine. Uh, a round of applause and also to thank Corda. Corda is, I think, the center of the digital economy, and there are a lot of expectations. The, uh, she has also mentioned the upcoming uh, university, uh, a special degree awarding university, which Professor Soma is very much aware about, a special degree awarding university. It will be the second one, I think, in Kenya after the National Defense University, which is now operational. Uh, the National Defense University is, is probably the only university which operates in two ministries. And probably we look forward to KAIST uh, doing the same. KAIST replicates what happened in Korea, just for information. They have an equivalent KAIST at the Korean Advanced Institute of Science and Technology. And it is what is known to have transformed Korea to what it is, a special deliberate decision at the highest levels of government. And it transformed Korea to uh, the post-war uh, situation to where they are. So we look forward to Josephine and the uh, Kodda and Konza Technopolis uh, making a, a great difference. So uh, I think the numbers are now 200, there were 200 and something, uh, 210 now, and we really thank uh, you for joining. Uh, we would request that you put most of your questions uh, on, on the chat, uh, and probably we will allow just a, a few urgent questions after the presentation, but most of the questions could be on the chat and we'll respond in, in the chat. So with those remarks, allow me to invite uh, and join me in welcoming our PS representative, Dr. Kevin Gea, uh, to give his remarks uh, before he allows us to proceed uh, with the main session. Dr. Kivengia, please let's welcome the PS. Okay, thank you, DG. 
morning. Okay, as you have heard, my name is uh, Dr. Gideon Kiwenge. I work with the Minister of Education. I'm a Deputy Director there. And this morning I've been sent to represent our PS, Dr. Beatrice Muganda Inyangara, who is the PS of State Department for Higher Education and Research. Kindly allow me just to read her remarks. <coughs> I'll read the speech which should have been delivered by the PS, Dr. Beatrice Muganda Inyangara, who is the PS State Department for Higher Education and Research, during the Inacro Nakosti Distinguished Public Lecture, which is held today, 15th May 2023 at Nakosti Plaza, Nairobi. <laughs> I'll start by recognizing uh, the people present, Dr. David Desai, district key speaker for today's uh, lecture, the chairperson, Presidential Working Party on Educational Reforms, Professor Rafael Munavu, I understand is online, board members of Nakosti present and Fatwa online, <clears throat> board members from institutions present in person and virtually uh, other institutions, uh, members of the high level panel of STI presented today here by basically by Professor Some and others virtually, uh, Director General Nakosti, CEO NRF, CEO Kotda, who are the moderators of the memorable event today. I also recognize CEOs from other institutions present in person and virtually, professionals, scholars, innovators, inventors who are present today, invited guests, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. <clears throat> okay, it is indeed a great honor to have been invited to grace this memorials Mamonti as in occasion of the inaugural Nakosti Distinguished Public Lecture Series. It's indeed one of the of a kind. I therefore take this opportunity to thank the Nakosti Board and Management for revelating achievements such as this, which have brought the science, technology, and innovation sector into the limelight. Most importantly, and on behalf of the Minister, I would like to extend our sincere gratitude to our inaugural and distinguished key speaker, Dr. David Tisai, who is a man who needs no introduction as his achievements speak loudly for him. He has been a principal secretary in the Ministry of Education, State Department for Vocational and Techn Technical Education, and a former Principal Secretary, State Department for East Africa Community in the Ministry of East Africa Community and Regional Development. He is the founding chairman of Linking Industry with Academia Liwa. Which better person to give this lecture on world government approach in the science, technology, and innovation sector than him? Ladies and gentlemen, the government of Kenya is taking bold steps to boost the science, technology, and innovation sector as a key sector for the bottom-up economic transformation agenda. In this regard, His Excellency, the President and the Commander-in-Chief issued Executive Order Number One that establishes for the first in our history the Presidential Advisory Council on Science and Technology. When fully operational, the council will be a unique platform to harness the relevance of science, technology, and innovation for national security, public safety, public health, food and nutrition security, national cohesion, and inclusive sustainable development. That's transforming our country into a competitive, prosperous nation. To this end, today's distinguished public lecture captures the prevailing spirit of government as well on whole government approach, multi-agency approach, and multi-sectoral approach of doing <clears throat> of doing business. I note that the same thinking will be reaffirmed 
in the upcoming second multisectoral co uh, conference on science, technology, and innovation scheduled for next week at Safari Park Hotel, where our global partners will also be participating in full force to further this discussion. I'm told that Dr. David Desai will also be there to further articulate what he has in store for us today and give the private sector's perspectives. Ladies and gentlemen, the unparalleled importance of science, technology, and innovation is self-evident and critical in the transformation of our nation into a prosperous nation as envisaged in our vision 2030 and as posed in our Africa Agenda 2063. While research, technology, and development and innovation becomes increasingly, increasingly open, collaborative and international access to the benefits of STI and knowledge is unequally distributed within and among countries and people. And the technological gap between developing and developed countries is persistent. We must endeavor to bridge the gap, optimize, optimize on our national resources and transform the youth into persons of national prosperity. Africa's youth population is increasing, while that of developed continents is decreasing, declining at an alarming rate. We need to technologically strategize on this opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, be reminded that we are living during unprecedented times in human history, which have been simultaneously dictated by the COVID. 19, global and regional conflicts, economic recession, and seemingly irreversible climate change. It is thus apparent that investing in research, science, technology, and innovation are critical now and more than ever. We therefore call upon key actors in the STI system to forge a common front in resource mobilization and implementation of government agenda. It is for this reason it is for this reason that the cabinet secretary recently appointed the National Research Technology and Innovation Consortium or committee to help build synergies in the sector aimed at creating fruitful partnerships, both within and without the country. Moving forward, it is it will be about partnerships, about agency and about sectoral engagements with the visible, measurable outcomes that impact on lives of Kenyan people. This is not, there is no time to waste as people have high expectations. Ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude, allow me to reiterate that we must continue to demonstrate the power of research, science, technology, and innovation as a resolution to challenges faced, <coughs> challenges faced nationally and globally. Taking cognizance that science, technology, and innovation are at the core of national and global security, public safety, and inclusive sustainable development. I once more thank the organizers of this event great event, namely Nakosti and Arev and Kotida, Dr. Kevit Desai, the key note speaker, and all oh, you distinguished participants. With these remarks, I call upon the moderators to preside over the session and invite Dr. David and Dr. Kevit Desai to give the inaugural district's public lecture on the whole government approach in science, technology, and innovation systems for bottom-up economic transformation agenda. Thank you. Yeah, please join me in applauding the peers, I think, as presented by the director. That was uh, very insightful. Uh, allow me to acknowledge, I think, once more, our board members I'm seeing at least Professor Muregi is online. I hope uh, he has been given panelist rights to be able to interject. I also saw Director Rachel somewhere. So for all the board members, uh, uh, Mr. Yagon, I hope you'll give them the panelist rights and also the high level panel members uh, who are online so that they can uh, come in after the presentation. So with that, I think it's my humblest uh, of duties to invite now
the distinguished uh, speaker to give his distinguished public lecture. Dr. Kevin Desai, please. Thank you. Thank you. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Somme, Professor, the DG of Nakosti. Indeed, it's an honor to be in front of you and to discuss this enormous subject with respect to not only government, but also our, nas our national sectors being involved with respect to a whole approach towards science, technology, and innovation with a view of promoting the necessary transformation within our social and economic potential. Ladies and gentlemen, indeed, this is absolutely crucial. As previous uh, speakers have mentioned, Dr. Somi, the fundamental importance and the crucial importance of why science, technology, innovation is so necessary, built on the progress that we have achieved as a nation to date, but most importantly, how it plays a significant role within the context of our future and how it um, essentially is the foundation towards our prosperity. And it calls to reflect on several key areas. Indeed, science, technology, innovation is an enabler, an enabler which promotes the highest level of transformation. Today, we're fortunate within the context of government policy and government agenda that several sectors have been identified as key within the context of the bottom up approach to promote that inclusive nature of uh, economy and the promotion of uh, how science, technology, innovation could find ways in which it not only diversifies, but most importantly, enables commerce within its entire capacity to drive inclusive development as well as resilience and self-reliance. The sectors that have been prioritized by government within the context of various value chains have a specific relevance to this discussion today. And I thank Nakosti for promoting the dialogue towards the importance of a solution, science, technology, and innovation towards achieving national competitiveness and prosperity. Sectors such as cotton, textile, and the entire value chain from um, growing cotton to spinning, weaving, ginning, and into the fashion floors have a huge uh, precursor within the context of how research plays a significant role in raising levels of productivity, innovation, and diversification. We see sectors like edible oil, dairy, leather, rice, tea, and the blue economy, as well as minerals, planting of trees, as well as construction, as key resources within the context of our economy as a country. But what we have seen traditionally is low levels of productivity, innovation, efficiency, and the ability to diversify. And science, technology, innovation by its nature holds that relevance within the context of creating traction and transition and sustainability and inclusive development for these sectors. These sectors hugely depend on a way in which we're able to promote the interconnectedness and interdisciplinary capabilities of all the different stakeholders. What's also extremely important, ladies and gentlemen, that while we look at our communities, for example, they have um, indigenous microeconomic activities whether it's in certain areas with respect to healthcare, where they're growing and providing medicines through herbs, or their ability to have cultivated by tradition over a long time, a millennia, thousands of years, and so on, that ability to harvest certain crops or um, uh, produce, and that um, ability to find ways in which that has a huge impact. And, and our ability to look into that very approach of communities and that uh, interdisciplinary networks they have by tradition to promote produce into markets is one of the foundational capabilities as it joins onto the SME sector, which then adds greater levels of value 
and on to greater levels of industrialization that attracts foreign direct investment, as well as other forms of local direct investment. So the importance, ladies and gentlemen, once again, I'd like to emphasize is to promote the need for science, technology, innovation within the context of the entire artery, the nerves, and into every facet of our approach towards prosperity. And this calls for great levels of engagement within the context of all stakeholders. I'd like to also emphasize, and this brings me to my next thought, and that is the important resource we have with respect to our youth. As former chairman of the Young Scientist Kenya Initiative and also the founder of the Engineering Students Exhibition, repeatedly, year after year, we've seen when uh, efforts are put in place as far as framework structures and leadership, we've been able to galvanize youth from all over the nation, all the counties within the nation, from the, tiny, from the largest towns to the tiniest villages, there's a huge resource in our youth, our women and our men. And we've seen this um, uh, repeatedly over years where what attracts them and by nature, they have these traits of curiosity, creativity and resourcefulness are truly exceptional. And that's the basis of this discussion today and this dialogue. How do we create platforms and avenues and pathways in order to develop these uh, traits, which are so necessary at this particular time when we're looking at ways in which we promote the greatest level of efficiency towards our actions and decisions use, using research, science, technology, innovation. And so what profoundly moved me was these young people from the tiniest, from endowed and less endowed parts of this country who show in, interest and courage to provide a solution, whether it's in social sciences, economic sciences, physical sciences, chemical sciences, and bring their innovation to Nairobi, where it would be showcased amongst all different stakeholders. Now, such events, ladies and gentlemen, while they truly are astonishing and show the passion and the, the character of our youth, are extremely significant. If we look at other countries, like, for example, Ireland, where the Young Scientist Initiative uh, began, it was part and parcel of an education and a cultural engagement, which led to the entire nation paying homage to science, technology, innovation. And this then led to Ireland as one of the premier countries within the context of science, technology, and innovation. So such is the power of uh, our ability to create the interconnectedness, the interdisciplinary engagement by all stakeholders, but most importantly, to create those profound ways where youth are able to demonstrate those extremely valuable traits of curiosity, creativity, and resourcefulness, which need to be treasured and the promotion of these traits within the context of our homage as a nation towards a culture of science, technology, innovation. Ladies and gentlemen, what also leads me to another thought is uh, the importance with respect to the needs of private sector. Private sector has long sustained itself and profitable by way of its nature towards galvanizing all its resources towards promoting greater levels of dynamism in its activities. Markets change and uh, markets are dynamic and therefore private sector needs to constantly regulate and achieve greater levels of engagement within the context of its changing market scenes. This creates the need for organizations to be dynamic and they show this dynamism by promoting levels of capability or opportunity and that ability to achieve a core competence in one area of uh, the commerce sector, whether it's service, trade, or industry. And most importantly, find ways in which they're able to promote the necessary diversification into different arteries based on the core area of their competence. And this then gives them access to greater levels of markets. This is traditionally as long as uh, life was and um, economy was, but most importantly too, 
is a need for them to be more productive, to find ways in which they're able to promote the levels of gains on a time basis, which has a huge uh, emphasis with respect to what they do as far as an impact into the market is concerned. Also important to them is naturally innovation and that ability to find ways in which they're able to constantly develop greater levels of capacity in every process of their businesses. The potential of prosperity is extremely significant today. We're on a market uh, value of almost $6 trillion within the context of our regional associations. Government's efforts have been consolidated by way of its promotion of um, structures towards the African continental free trade area, a billion plus people. And um, the East African community within the context of its ability to have um, a relationship with what is most likely the fourth largest market in the world after India, China, United States would be the EAC. Our structures within the context of policy reform, our social, economic, environmental, and our efforts towards political confederation create the necessary enabling environment for business to thrive into one of the most uh, extensive markets in the world and the reach to cut across the Indian Ocean to the Atlantic Ocean as one country. But most importantly, too, is a need that we have achieved within the context of emphasizing as a population of 300 million people on the need for industrialization. The proof of this is indeed the agreement towards the common external tariff of all band structure, which ensures that we nurture all that is locally produced within the context of a five and a half million square kilometers as a key precursor towards uh, prosperity and economy-driven social in inclusive development as well as resilience and prosperity. And so the need for us to promote value addition is core within the context of this huge pull from our regional markets and our continental markets where consumerism worth of six, six trillion six trillion dollars worth of consumer consumerism exists. And so the markets become absolutely critical within the context of our value proposition as Nikosti, as the fraternity of science, technology, innovation, to really create the bridge between the opportunity and our current context. I, we must uh, strive under the MIC clusters, which hope to enjoin all stakeholders, whether it's academia, private sector, SME, communities, the youth, towards common value chains that are uh, built on the necessary structures and systematic capabilities of policy, legislation, regulation, and standards, and the necessary infrastructure and the coordination capacity, that we're able to raise this profile into huge markets, not only our local, our regional, but world markets. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is possible if we look at the growing landscape of uh, treaties, conventions, as well as protocols across the globe. We've seen a huge shift towards uh, transformation. We've seen this through the different uh, structures. For instance, we have the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 4, which emphasizes the need for quality education, the issue of relevance with respect to education, the UNESCO protocols with respect to a recommendation on investment, the a African Union strategy on science, innovation, technology, and its agenda. At a regional level, we have the World Trade Organization efforts towards intellectual property rights, which ensures that we're able to safeguard the indigenous knowledge as well as the efforts that we put in collectively as a nation to differentiate ourselves. We have efforts with respect to big calls of uh, collaboration within the context of African states through the science, technology, innovation strategy for Africa, or the efforts with respect to the UN UNDRIP um, declaration 
on the rights of indigenous peoples, their intellectual property rights, and their efforts in order to promote the highest level of value within this context. The efforts within the context of our local policy frameworks include the East African Science Technology Organization, the efforts towards the East African Union, East African Community and its 2020-2030 strategy, its vision with respect to the EAC Vision 2030. And um, this um, closely related to our own policies, starting from the constitution, which promotes knowledge and science, technology, innovation, and promotes that fundamental right within its context. Onwards to the Kenyan Vision 2030, the various acts that have been developed, the Science Technology Innovation Act, the TIVIT Act, the um, Kenya Qualifications Framework, further efforts within the arteries of um, our nation include the Kenya National Health Research Policy, the Kenya Agricultural Sector Development Strategy, the Water Act, the Kenya National Environment Policy, as well as the Kenya Energy Act, and several other acts which uh, uh, are part and parcel locally of more than 15 different acts that create the emphasis towards uh, science, technology, innovation, and the need for research. But most importantly is the 25 other acts which are, exist with, by way of treaties and protocols, as well as other efforts towards emphasizing the need for uh, a collaborative engagement by this nation to the rest of the world. And indeed, why this uh, is so fundamental to this issue today, ladies and gentlemen, is that indeed we would like to participate within the context of global science, technology, innovation at a much more progressive rate. While we've done fairly well, the need to increase our participation becomes absolutely essential. And this has a precursor. This indeed would be the precursor towards accessing markets abroad by way of policies, legislations, regulations, and standards. And that huge uh, emphasis towards uh, research and science and technology would enable us to literally engage our um, external markets with a view of ensuring that we promote the highest level of competitiveness and cooperation as far as our economy is concerned. This calls for greater levels of engagement within this context of science, technology, innovation. Ladies and gentlemen, we're on the verge of creating a national policy for research, science, technology, innovation under the auspices of NACOSTI. And we're hoping that it addresses certain fundamental values within the context of ensuring that um, in this vast capability of government, for instance, that we're able to find ways in which we promote interdisciplinary engagement of all the different ministries, of all the different agencies, all the efforts, all the people, but also that link to the different productive sectors, the clusters that have been mentioned with respect to the bottom-up economic uh, structures, and the ability to one, for once and for all, promote the link within the context of our youth and their uh, uh, traits of curiosity, creativity, and resourcefulness. There's also the need to promote greater levels of cohesiveness within the context of how we engage in the sector, sectors and the priority that we put our resources in, in view of the importance of science, technology, innovation in every decision process an action process that yields in greater levels of productivity, innovation, and efficiency. And finally, you know, there's a need to promote the necessary consolidation of all the different acts and uh, policies and structures and frameworks and sessional papers. There is a need within the context of how we're able to, within this context of a national policy, raise not only the profile of science, technology, innovation, but create the necessary integrated effort towards the common cause. As I close, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to briefly go through this one slide within the context of uh, a systemic approach towards science, technology, innovation. And it all starts with the SME pipeline. Our Vision 2030 objectives coupled with 
the various sectors that we've identified, the cotton and textile sector, the edible oil, the dairy, the leather, the rice, the tea, the blue economy, the minerals, as well as the construction sector and all other sectors which are absolutely critical. But in order to make worldly sectors, we need to think in terms of a cluster. And so it starts within the context of addressing aspects of uh, uh, systemically efforts towards research-driven policy, legislation, regulation, standards. It requires research-driven efforts towards infrastructure, um, coordination capacity and competencies, but above it requires an interdisciplinary approach within the context of how ministries work with one another in order to create the best and optimum solution, which is holistic. And this slide is all about holistic engagements in view of the fact that we cannot say that it's private sector's role to do this and it's academic sector's role to do this. It's a collective role. Today, as all participants of this uh, initiative, this dialogue, this movement, it's up to us to realize that this is a collective responsibility and calls for collective leadership. And therefore, the objective primarily is to see to it that SME value chains from an end-to-end -end ecosystem, from a horizontal to a ver vertical connection system, are fully integrated within the context of a platform of research, science, and technology to give them the best possible value, but most importantly, the best possible engagement and opportunity. Economic prosperity would be achieved within the context of our larger scale projects, our national projects, which are totally dedicated towards ensuring that we, they link in bringing up the necessary capability within our sectors, all the way to grassroots level. But most importantly, the close relationship the economic sectors have with uh, both university graduates and universities, research institutions, and TIVITs. TIVITs being an enabler towards applied research, universities, basic and applied, but most importantly, the values that we hold together based on trust. And uh, this can only be achieved through relationships within the context of how our economic efforts are coupled to our lead institutions that are involved in research. And most importantly, under a framework of necessary policies, legislations, regulations, and standards. And it's through this effort that we not only achieve the very values that we are hoping to achieve within the context of education, and that is promoting higher levels of quality, access, equity, and relevance, but most importantly, all this would yield towards greater levels of industry growth and large-scale projects and infrastructure within the context of our efforts. This would have a huge impact within the context of the very important nature of our current context, whether it's fighting global inflation or uh, uh, the challenges we're faced with climate change and its effect on food security. And in addition to the important role it has within the context of how we're trying to achieve greater levels of prosperity as a nation and our relationship within the region. This then promotes the necessary uh, relevance and quality of not only curriculums, but the proportional balance that's required between research and education, which needs to be developed as we go forward and the further objectives of this country. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to close by thanking you all. Indeed, it is an honor to address uh, this gathering. It's, it's absolutely critical from a perspective of where we've come as a nation and uh, the efforts that we've always put within the context of science, technology, innovation. But today's yet another chapter within the context of this structure and dialogue, which promotes the highest level of inclusivity by way, way of participants. And that important role that, you know, science, technology, innovation isn't part of a community, a dedicated community, but it's the whole nation. It's the whole nation promoting the necessary collective leadership, the collective action, the collective responsibility towards a common platform that you know, yields those values of access, equity, quality, and relevance of uh, research would take us yet a further step towards prosperity. I thank you and I close.
Yeah, let's give him a, a better applause than that one. That's a great work, great work. Yes, yes, I think, yes, yes, yes uh, uh, I think works more to acknowledge. I think you have now 2.30 uh, participants and thank you, thank you very much for sparing your time. Uh, my colleague, Dr. Njubi, are you able to join? To lead us in uh, this session, uh, uh, discussion, question and answer. Are you able to be a panelist? Is he online? Dr. Njubi? Uh, unmute. Yes, yes, I think you lead us in the, in the discussion, but allow me first to acknowledge I've seen Professor Muregi. I hope your panelists right. I've seen uh, Rachel. Uh, I've also seen the former CEO, NRF, uh, Dr. Jemima. Please uh, welcome. There's also the CEO of uh, Kipi. That's Kirdi. Calvin Onyango, is it Kirdi or Kipi? Kirdi, yes. CEO Kipi, uh, welcome. And uh, any other of our CEOs and, 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 and board members. So, Dr. Njubi, probably you can uh, uh, lead the session with, uh, by probably requesting the board members and high level panel members to initiate the discussions. Dr. Njubi? Good morning, uh, uh, Prof. and the uh, guests of the Professor of South. And then now request the, uh, the board members of Nakosti to read the, the, the mandate for this session, questions and answers. Thank you. Bro. I think for some regular it's unmuted. Maybe Prof, you want to say something? Yeah, yeah. I, I first want to say, am I, am I audible, Prof? Am I audible? Yes, you are very audible. Very audible, Prof. Thank you so very much. I want to first uh, uh, thank you all protocols observed and thank our seniors and mentors uh, who uh, are with us. We uh, we appreciate your presence and we follow you for the, the, the work you're doing in this country, especially in this sector. Um, <laughs> I also want to commend the, the initiative. Uh, DG, thank you so very much with your team done very well. Well, mine is just a comment and I want to thank uh, Prof. Desai for uh, the, the, that uh, very elaborate uh, 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 and, and holistic approach to uh, what should be happening in this country, in this sector. I, I, I can't help but I was, when I was presenting and I was thinking about what we are doing. And I remember Prof was talking about even the metrics. Do we have the metrics? In fact, I, I'm wondering if we are asked to say, what is the contribution of STI sector in the economy of this country? I don't know whether we have the numbers. And this is not just Nakosti. I think of NLIF, I think of be able to be felt more. If we cannot be able to express ourselves and tell them this is what we do, this is what we have contributed to the economy. The other thing I wanted to comment about is the issue of um, uh, you know uh, you know being uh, multifaceted and uh, you know having multiple approaches to do things. I appreciate and applaud the initiative of CONSA, uh, the Safana uh, Fari and Office. But when you think about uh, Safana Fari, you can't help to think about Silicon Ferry. And people who know the history of Silicon Ferry know that it originated from institutions of hiring, specifically Stanford University. And I think as much as we're gonna focus on what council will do the open university, we must rethink what is the relevance of our universities in the, this sector. Because why can't we have a Stanford University called University of Nairobi having its Silicon Valley? They started, Stanford is the one who started Silicon Valley because the researchers there and the engineers became very innovative. What and why are, is the government giving so many resources and so much uh, to these institutions, but we are not getting commensurate um, 
returns, especially in terms of economic contribution uh, from uh, the knowledge, inventions and innovations generated uh, from our universities. I think as we focus on the Safana Fund, the CONSA, I think we must also rethink about all these institutions we have and what can they contribute and are they contributing? And if they are, can we optimize? Can we do things better? Because I believe that we have so much potential even in our universities. And I applaud this initiative because it brings all the players and all the stakeholders in this sector so that each one can have a place in this big table. Thank you. Hello. Then uh, our distinguished speaker can, can say something, but you also have Professor Some within the room and uh, Director Rachel also is online. Maybe in the meantime, Professor Soma. No, I was saying that uh, Professor Njubi's job is to ask uh, the other members to talk, but now that you've given me the microphone, I really want to uh, praise uh, uh, Gavit for what he has presented to us. I saw a whole of um, areas where everyone, everyone meaning the higher education sector, participating in um, industry, uh, research, and the public in general. Um, I like the bit about the youth, because I think the future is in the youth. Thank you very much. Yeah. Dr. Njubi? Uh, or, or we may give to the distinguished speaker to respond to those as others uh, organize their, their thoughts. Yes, uh, uh, Dr. Desai, maybe you can answer those questions. Thank you. Uh, indeed, the um, issue with respect to the different funds that exist and uh, the plethora of initiatives within this country are on one hand a very good thing, showing you know the determination as well as the excitement around science, technology, innovation, its approaches, structures, and so on. But close to what has been uh, echoed by the speaker, the need to promote the necessary optimization and the need for us to look at value chains from an end-to-end -end perspective. Let me illustrate this further. Look at pyrethrum, for example. At every level of processing, it adds value by five. But when you promote science, technology, innovation into the processing factor, it increases its value by 25 times. So the need for us to look at value chains from an end-to-end -end ecosystem, from a perspective of how it promotes complementary engagement throughout all the different sectors, all is based on the promotion of science, technology, innovation. And I think that I couldn't agree with you more that there's a need to optimize, there's a need now to take advantage of government uh, policy, its direction, with respect to its sectoral engagement of different sectors that it's identified as key sectors for our nation's competitiveness with the vis, our region, our continent, and the rest of the world. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I think back to you, David, and uh, I think any, any, any of our participants, are free to uh, comment or discuss. Probably, David, uh, if you have access to the chats, you could also check if there are comments on the chat or there's a Q&A portion. You could uh, check and read on the same.
David, unmute. And I'm also seeing a, a fellow moderator, Professor Dixon, maybe you could also take, uh, take charge and say something. Thank you, DG, and uh, thanks to the speaker. I think he has hammered the points home. A uh, quick one would be uh, the current uh, funding proposed by, um, uh, in this case, UFB, the universities. How can the university leverage to ensure that they maximize on the new funding model and uh, we should be able to see universities thriving as opposed to where they are now? Yes, I think that's also uh, the key has recorded. How can the universities leverage on the new funding model, which has just come up and is being tried out? There's also uh, my colleague, Professor Alex Mumbo from Technical University of Kenya. Please uh, unmute uh, and say something. Yeah, you're being given panel panelist rights. Hello. Can I yes, be heard? Welcome, Prof. Yes, you can Thank be heard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, mine is to really appreciate that uh, Nakosti has seen it uh, wise to get this platform running. It's something that we've been looking for. And I believe moving forward, we shall be able to interact more, network, and even get to know what expertise exists in the various uh, institutions. Uh, be they research institutions or institutions of higher learning. I had one uh, concern with regard to what uh, the CEO uh, NRF mentioned, uh, that already they have created a database which uh, is actually available for researchers now to log in and uh, populate their data. I've gone through the website I have not been able to locate the same. Probably that could be uh, better clarified to us so that we moving forward now we can begin to participate effectively. My other uh, appreciation goes to Dr. Kevi Desai. Dr. Kevi Desai, you, you are really a mentor in this area and uh, thank you for having been around. Uh, to really show the light. I think uh, from your interactions, from the time um, uh, you, you started Centurion, we have seen a lot of development and uh, really focus on what Kenya needs to move forward. You have given us a lot of um, ideas on what we need to do even to advance development in this country moving forward. However, my concern is the apparent disconnect that exists, that is existing and still continues to exist eh? between uh, our institutions of higher learning, the TVETs, and even research institutions. And I was wondering, uh, there has been talk of, you know, bringing these institutions together, bringing industry together. But still you find that probably industry is on their own and uh, these institutions are on their own as entities, the silos that um, you know have existed still persist. What is it that we can do to uh, enable at least more interaction? There has been talk about uh, Kenya instituting a dual uh, system of education whereby the industry would recruit people and then send them to universities, perhaps, or, or even uh, technical, inst uh, uh, technical institutes. Would that be perhaps a solution to some of these um, silo, silos that we have seen uh, existing and persisting over time? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Comment on Um, Alex, I think you are concerned of uh, saying how do we uh, get institutions uh, to work um, with the research. It's still an area where 
we are thinking that um, we, we break the silos. We have silos in training institutions. We have silos in place of work. Sometimes place of work have uh, their own rights, their own innovations and so forth. We need to see how those are coming together. Very interesting for me, I have known Liwa to be really that focused to say, let's break the, the, the silos that are in the institutions and the silos that are in the workplace. So I we really wish Gavit would um, really um, please this process so that we have industry working with institutions to produce a product that will help our country. That, I think that connection between training and production of products or workplace is still needed to be better. Thank you. Indeed, um, the efforts that we're seeing progressively in the country and all the different examples show the need for that cooperation model between our productive sectors, our entire commerce sector, as well as all the different stakeholders and structures within the country. Let me illustrate further a um, metal processing plant in Thika, which focuses on aluminium, worked closely with a, a, a Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology to create specific um, um, knowledge and skills within the context of the aluminium foundry and its works. And what then, what that then related to was hugely diversified value chains, which enabled the factory to achieve greater diversification of its core foundry capability into different uh, steel structures, as well as uh, manufacturing structures. Ladies and gentlemen, this is as simple as it is within the context of this cooperation model. It's, it's about that ability for organizations like Nacosti and intermediary organizations to play a participatory role to bring key stakeholders together to promote that research and provided we have a framework that truly values research. The need uh, to find ways in which we promote greater sustainability of universities within the context of an array of opportunities. And I say this because it's only university and Tibet and their professors and their trainers who have that fundamental capability of organized research. It doesn't exist in the private sector. It exists within academic institutions. A lot more has to be done towards creating the necessary capacity for lecturers and trainers to have the necessary time, for example, to allocate to research and the necessary capacity. Equally important is it's supply driven, sorry, it's demand driven within the context of projects so that it can co-share within the context of uh, private sector funding together with uh, government uh, capitation and funding. In uh, progressive countries who are world competitive, it's the productive sector that funds research by far up to 60 to 70 percent, and uh, the rest of the contributions come from government. But there's a clear alignment to the requirements and outcomes which are conducive to both academia and a value proposition for academia as much as a value proposition for the industry itself. Ladies and gentlemen, the importance of um, realizing today that uh, in isolation, no matter how much um, capacity exists, with, wh where, whether it be in a ministry or an MDA or a private sector company, the need for us to collaborate is uh, the leveraging factor. It's a leveraging factor to promote the necessary diversity of success of research because of the holistic uh, participation of different stakeholders that share different ideas, thoughts, and insights. And that has to be a cultural thing. We've seen that um, a fully integrated uh, innovation ecosystem would hugely profoundly help within the context of relevance, equity, access, and quality of research, science, technology, innovation. What's also very critical is academic freedom the ability for us to pave the way for academics to truly be free within the context of research, but at the same time, harbor within the context of sustainability to different stakeholders. There couldn't be a better moment than today with all the plethora of um, support we have worldwide, 
the encouragement into economies in the world, the region, the um, local opportunities to really set about this strategy within the context of key sectors that the government has prioritized. And um, with these key sectors will come an enabling effort by government to promote the necessary policy, legislation, regulation, and standards. And with it will come the ability for us to, in a minuscule way, look from an end-to-end -end ecosystem and jumpstart uh, cluster development as, as it should be. If you look at first, uh, if we look at competitive countries in the world, like, for example, if you look at Germany, Germany leads in energy. But it's, it's profound how every single institution within the cluster, whether it's a TIVID institution or a research institution like Fraunhofer Institute or their universities and their applied science universities and their small medium enterprises and their micro enterprises and their single band um, people together with their multinationals and large organizations have a fabric of interconnection. And this is what we uh, desperately need in order to show and uh, yield, you know, that overall uh, potential we have, which is tremendous by way of the fact that, you know, we have such a young population, we have, uh, we are resource rich, we have interconnectivity throughout Africa, and we have a, a, a beckoning market uh, worth uh, $6 trillion worth of consumerism. So all of this, you know, points to the need that and first and foremost, we prioritize uh, science, technology, innovation as a key enabler to commerce-driven, inclusive development, resilience, self-reliance, and sustainability. Thank you. Yes, I think thank you very much. I think Ben Roberts has a uh, uh, burning discussion. Ben Roberts? You uh, yeah, thanks. Can you Please. hear me? Yes, we can hear and thank you. Okay, wonderful. Um, yeah, look, so my question is, um, it, it seems in this whole, it seems in this space of uh, industry academic partnerships, um, it seems we're doing a whole lot of talking about it and, and not enough of doing it. Um, and, and it's great that um, uh, Dr. Desai just mentioned about the aluminium company that work with uh, a university, you know, but, but, but we're not seeing enough of this. Um, and maybe things are going on and we're not hearing about it. So, um, you know, perhaps we should be having some kind of a, um, a platform um, whereby partnerships that are coming together or, or, or want to come together um, are, are then put uh, and, and showcased in some kind of a platform. So if, if, if an industry, you know, wants to work with the university on doing something that, that is put on a platform as something they want to do, uh, if it's something that is in progress, that is also there showcased on the platform and then completed things and success stories like uh, like we just heard about also being showcased on, on the platform. And, you know, with that in mind, um, you know, as partnerships of industry and academia come together, um, then they might then go uh, and do the resource mobilization together. Uh, as was mentioned, you know, in developed countries, it is industry that does most research funding um whereas it seems in kenya that uh, academia goes out looking for funding from either government or from ngos uh looking for funding without necessarily reaching out to find um you know to find partners in industry to take that forward whereas it's doing in the wrong order right it should be that the partnership should come together and then the partners together go out and seek the funding and then then you will actually uh, um, have some connectedness on on funding which is there to to make the initiative happen um and get results so I, i'm thinking i don't know which agency you know should be doing this but um but but it's something that really um you know tracking those partnerships and the different stages they're at you know needs to be done because it, it seems i don't see a lot of evidence um uh of of what is really happening in this space um and that's what we need to do more we need to move from action unless um if, if we have more action then we would identify more problems that, that that might be there to address rather than sort of making theoretical frameworks before we discover the problems let's try and get more activity and action going on 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ben Roberts. Maybe you could tell us uh, your institution. Uh, sorry, yeah, I work for Liquid Intelligent Technologies. I also work in Young Scientist Kenya as with, uh, I used to work with Dr. Desai on that. So, uh, among other things, thanks. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for that insight. Uh, I think our uh, distinguished speaker will be able to say something. But allow me to also introduce Dr. Margaret Karembu, the uh, uh, director of uh, ESA, a very well uh, renowned uh, researcher. Uh, currently, the convener of a task force on, on the development of a national research and development policy, uh, in which we are participating, at, I think, again with Dr. Kevin. Uh, Margaret, if you could uh, unmute, and I hope you have the panelist rights, uh, and say something before we also check what is on the charts. Thank you. Margaret? Uh, un unmute? See with us. Oh, comment shortly. So I, I don't know if you could uh, just list some of the things in the chat so that uh, we can read them together. And some are just uh, noting comments, but you can pick out what, yeah, from, from the start very, very quickly so that the English <coughs> lady, speaker can. Uh, this need to establish key priority areas on science, technology, innovation to drive transformation of key socioeconomic. This will guide. Yes, this is the function number one of the National Commission of NACOSTI. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you go to our website now, the board of NACOSTI approved the 12 point uh, STI priorities for engagement with stakeholders. So, this is a good forum to initiate discussions on STI priorities. If you log in to our uh, website at this particular time, they're right at the front panel. 12 point STI priorities, which cover quite a range. It's not just focusing on technology, but focusing on things like inclusivity, STI diplomacy, so many other things in frontier technologies, indigenous technology, and, and so forth. So you can log on that. Next one was uh, we wish the government should support uh, simulation in our institutions. Uh, I think the government has had the PS is here. Uh, be able to, uh, to assist. Uh, I just also wanted to add on what uh, uh, Robert has said in terms of funding, some of the things that uh, we need to discuss uh, on the way forward. Uh, very recently, I think His Excellency the President issued a new funding model, and in the, in, in the, in the circular or the directive that came from uh, the big house, it talked of the funding model that has been done tentatively, awaiting discussions on research and other aspects, as the good Professor Asome is here. So this is a time also to debate moving forward on what could inform that next engagement of the universities with research in that funding model. And as Rob has said, if you even Google, you'll find like the number one ranked institution like uh, Switzerland in the Global Innovation Index, uh, about over 70% of the research funding comes from the private sector. Then probably 10, 15% from the government, and then another 10% from the philanthropist. So that is the approach uh, which has been adopted with institutions which have, have gone ahead of us. Uh, I know we are yet far from there, but that should be the aspiration. The high numbers of funding come from the private sector. It will imply that you have to know the language of the private sector because they are the ones who own the money. So they sort of dictate what is the language that uh, we, we, we need to convey to them to be able to give that funding. Uh, most recently also, and as mentioned in the speech of the peers, uh, uh, Waziri, Cabinet Secretary for Education, established the National Research Technology Innovation uh, Consortium or committee, which is meant actually to bring these uh, partnerships, uh, as Robert is requesting, a platform which you discuss and engage so that we are aware there's a team, there's a consortia on traditional technologies, there's a consortia on health, there's a consortia on, on food and uh, food security to be able to figure out who are the best to discharge. If we talk of food security, we are aware that the government established CALRO as a leading agency for that purpose. So when you leave out CALRO in that consortia, then, and they have the resources, by the way, they have the resources, they have facilities, they have infrastructure. Again, if you want to have an impacting health consortia, when you leave out Camry, which is really, really funded, and by the way, Camry, the, their records show that they receive around 3 billion from the Exchequer and another 6 billion from extent of funding agencies. So what model do they use to get that 6 billion? This is some of the things that we hope that as we dialogue in the future, we'll be able to find. The same with Calro. They're able to say that they get most of their funding from the, the donors. Uh, the challenge, of course, when donors come in, they will dictate your priorities. So we need to focus on the local industries more, get the much that we can get from NRF and the government, 
but see the possibilities of 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 of, of uh, engaging the private sector and it's good the distinguished speaker was a chairman of kepsa so the language of kepsa is probably that's actually my question what is the language of kepsa that will help this our institutions nakostis nrf universities and such institutions to be able to collaborate with them in their language that that they desire but in the meantime uh, any any other yeah for basic yes yes bro. yes yeah I, I wanted to say something about what you are saying and yeah, I, I love the I go ahead I love the idea one of the speakers talked about we must break these silos but I am also wondering whether when we break these silos aren't or well, it is also possible to create another big silo and this is what I'm saying if we we in the academia and then the private sector and the people you know the elites of the society come together we can break the small silos that we have and create a bigger silo. Uh, I like the theme of this uh, meeting. We are talking about uh, bottom-up approach to whatever economic empowerment and touching the lives of the people. In fact, I think and I am to encourage that we do not forget to engage the people in the bottom. The bottom-up approach, we are talking about people who are in the counties. What is the space of county governments? When we talk about the funding, we have been relying on international funders. The funding is dwindling. Anybody in this sector knows that funding is dwindling and the priorities of funders are also changing. And therefore, even in our setting, we must really ask ourselves, what, who is going to fund what and who, how are we going to fund it? And I would encourage that as much as we rely on national government through NLIF, that we engineer our funding model even locally so that uh, even these county governments, we must loop them in. In fact, we must emphasize on looping them in. They have money. They can also fund very targeted and specific projects that benefit their people. For example, if it's milk for your addition, then they can say if this university or if this sector is in that space, we're going to fund it because they have money. So I, I am just trying to dissuade us from uh, just think about the national government and what we can do at higher level. What can we do at that low level where we can even say, you, you are in this county, when you are doing your budget for paying salaries and the rest, why don't you also think about the research in, in, in dairy industry, they in milk, in, in whatever product they are, in furrier addition, in mangoes and whatever, in, in, in other areas. So this is what I'm saying that we need to think about holistic, not just bring academia and industry and private sector, but also to remember that we, 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 we have two levels of governance and we must loop in uh, the, 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 the counties because they have a lot of money. And this is where little effect, little economic transformation will happen. Thank you. Uh, Hello. Thank you very much, Prof. I think it could not have been said any better. I hope the distinguished, uh, uh, just give me a second. I hope the distinguished uh, uh, speaker will, will comment on it. But I think it could not have been said uh, better. There's a lot of money in the 47 counties. They're struggling to engage them as, course, as part of the STM streaming target which the government introduced. But again, the counties also are very political. I think it also needs a, a language. And that's why one of the key priority areas in STI is STI diplomacy. What is the language that scientists need to use to convey the difficult information, the complex information that they have? There was a lot of debate on GMOs. And the big part of it was the scientists were speaking very correctly. But when Jiku, the other side, maybe is not fully understanding what are those very advanced, uh, advanced words. So uh, again, uh, somebody does say hello. You can go ahead. Hey, this, this is Professor Boga. Ah, Prof, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I think I think uh, it's an interesting debate. But uh, I have been looking at the different funding models in the developed world where they have serious industries. Yes, industry funds sixty percent, most of it within their own industry divisions within the within industry, research divisions within industry, but still a public sector funding is very massive and very targeted 
and focused on some of the areas that industry cannot fund and uh, also supporting especially university research and public research institutions. And then there is a deliberate effort by those governments to also uh, sort of give incentives to industry and uh, incentives to research institutions and researchers to collaborate. So even the collaboration is incentivized by funding. It doesn't uh, just happen by accident. And even the commercialization of research, if you have a product to keep a patent, to do market research, to develop that into a product that will be competitive and to do, uh, for example, uh, competitor research, all that requires money and it has to be funded. And most of our public institutions and research institutions do not have this capability. So the role of government is very important, especially in developing countries like ours. When you look at uh, countries like Brazil and India, where we should probably be comparative, almost uh, a, a big percentage of the research, like for Embrapa, which is uh, the equivalent of Carlo, 90% of its research funding comes from government. And then of course, they, 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 they collaborate with industry and they sell their patents uh, to bring in some more income. But you see a massive strategic deliberate investment by government. I think uh, there's a lot of money in government despite all the challenges that, that we see. I think the thing that we need to figure out is how to get the political will to understand that if we want to transform agriculture, if we want to modernize our energy sources, uh, if we want to address water issues, if we want to address climate and other global challenges that keep uh, coming at us, and we want to develop our own scientific capability to be able to respond, then we have no alternative but to invest. And I think if we have a three trillion budget, setting aside like 10 billion for research every year is the right thing to do. But we must canvas for the political will and institutions like, uh, like uh, Nakosti, NRF, we should stop apologizing. We were given a mandate by government and this mandate requires money, and we must convince our colleagues who make this decision that that money should be made available, just like it's made available for other sectors. Literally, when you look at what is happening in universities, they are limping because most of the funding is student centered, so it's teaching center. It's not. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's not research centered. So research centered. It was the push we had in 2012 when we created NRF. It has just been funded for like three, four calendar years. Already people are tired and they are looking for impact. You can't have impact in four years. But uh, for example, having been a PS for agriculture, if it was not for those guys who funded the development of maize varieties in the 80s, and those who funded the development of Ruiru 11 and the, the other coffee varieties and even the tea clones, we wouldn't be where we are as market leaders in some of these uh, products. But uh, those uh, varieties are old. They are 30 years old. And uh, Calro doesn't have any money to develop new varieties. And so because the uh, variety development, for example, in the agriculture sector is something that you do every six years because especially where we are in a dynamic uh, uh, climate uh, environment, we need to always adapt and look for new solutions. So I think uh, this country has not had a serious debate about uh, science and technology and in its place in society. As scientists, we, had, we talk to ourselves and uh, we have never had an, uh, an opportunity to, to, to engage the political class properly on these scientific uh, in, uh, aspirations that we feel the country should have. We have debated the constitution, we have debated Wanjiku issues, but I think the, 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 the most important thing that can make this country competitive, science has not been debated properly at any level. And even as we try to mobilize ourselves, 
let's find an opportunity for the president, His Excellency the President, and the political decision makers to at least pay attention to the science sector, because I think it's the one thing that can help us move to the next level instead of uh, just uh, groping around in the scientific space with the individual efforts of researchers finding a grant here and there that is not coordinated, that is not connected to anything big, just because the framework is missing. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be able to contribute. And uh, yeah, I'm happy that at least the scientific community is talking but let's expand the discourse to the greater society, especially aiming at the political class, because even the way the political class conducts the GMO debate is quite depressing, because uh, we are at that level where we should be able to talk about science issues more, 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 more professionally, so that uh, when we make decisions, they are decisions that have been informed by, by knowledge and not uh, emotions. Thank you very much, Prof. And uh, greetings to all the colleagues there. Maybe we host another one, uh, uh, another event, similar event next month and the following month, then we might have something to take to the higher levels. Uh, but already at those higher levels, you, as, as, as we mentioned, they're already aware, and it's good even our president is, is a scientist by himself. I, I tried just to Google some of his tweets, and they were very, very encouraging. It's more of how do we package ourselves to present what we have to him. And, and in one of those tweets, which he said some years back, even before he knew he was going to be president, was that science is going to rule the world. So I remember that tweet very clearly. So probably he's waiting, but when we go there, we need the language. Uh, I, I don't think when we start presenting things uh, the way sometimes we put them like in terms of nanotechnology, uh, very complex terminologies to scientists and, and, and others, uh, it might work. So we need to learn also how we'll convert that to the language, but highly appreciated. I, I know the distinguished uh, speaker is, 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 is uh, recording that so that you'll be able to comment as much as we're running short of time. Yes, uh, uh, Dr. Margaret, I think your hand has been up for quite a while. Please uh, uh, say something. And also, I was just checking if uh, our very own and uh, chairperson of, of the Presidential Working Party for Samunavu has joined online. You might uh, let us know so that uh, you can also give remarks. But uh, uh, Dr. Margaret, please. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, DG and the organizers of this meeting. I think this is the beginning of uh, one thing that has been lacking in our research, science, technology, innovation ecosystem, linkages. We don't we talk about uh, breaking cycles, but we don't even know how we relate with each other, who is connecting with who and who is working with who, because that is one way we are going to ensure the cluster of uh, small little projects that have been funded here and there can be put together so that we have a bigger impact out of all this. We have a lot of repeat, uh, a lot of duplication in our universities. I'm sorry to say this because I've been there and I've seen what happens in uh, one university, Pwani could be happening in uh, Jomo Kenyatta or uh, Seku, but there is no effort to really link people together. So this is really a good opportunity and it's the beginning of uh, us building those relationships that we need to make our research have impact. Secondly, uh, I think when we talk about uh, government funding research, it's very, very important. But then let's, uh, let's also ask ourselves, where does government money come from? It comes from taxes and the taxes are coming, will be coming from private sector that is thriving, that is able to, to contribute the bigger taxes. And that is how uh, developed countries have built philanthropists who are ready to give um, money because uh, they, they are given incentives when they pay taxes because their businesses are thriving out of the research, the innovation, and the inputs that have come from research. So I think uh, much as uh, government funding is important, ask ourselves, where does the government money come from? It's coming from our taxes. And so if our industries are limping, then we are not going to have that, man that money, no matter how much we, we pressure the government. Lastly, uh, and uh, Dr. DG, you have that just touched about this, about uh, communication. How are we packaging our research findings so that 
uh, the end users can utilize those findings. I think there is very a very big uh, weakness in the way we package our research findings, and most of the, most of the times we are talking to ourselves. We talk the language that uh, scientists and technocrats can understand, and it's a high time we broke we broke that down to non technical language so that even a, a, a small business down there can pick up those research. Uh, those findings and improve on their surfaces. And talking about unpacking and language, uh, again, uh, three things that uh, happen if industry has to support research. One is if the research we are doing will improve their productivity so that they can have more profits and so have more money to pay taxes. Number two, if it is improving their services so they can, they can reach out to more people and by reaching out to more people, if they are selling a product, then the product also, uh, you know, you, you get more where you can collect revenue. Thirdly, and very, very importantly, and this is where we really must focus on also, is if we are able to make our industries create some niche markets, because when they create niche markets, again, uh, it, is, it is really a cycle of how best to work with the private sector. Then the private sector will find it even more easy to work with our public research institutions because they know that there is something in it for them. So until we create that value proposition that there is something in it for our local private sector so that they can come to us, we don't have to convince them to take our research findings because we have we'll already have worked with them. And so they'll be coming back and back and it will be very easy for them to invest, put a small percentage to our universities, to our research institutions, because they know that by putting in that little money, it's seed that is going to help, help them multiply tenfold. So thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm really looking forward to more. And uh, congratulations to Dr. Desai for that excellent talk. Thank you. Thank you. Doctor, are you able to say something about the, uh, the policy? Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Like thank it. you again for the different teams that I've seen in this forum that have participated in the process that uh, we are undertaking, of course, together with the, with the, with the government partners to uh, developing a national research and development policy, mainly looking at the, the bigger picture of things. How, how is our research organized? How are we prioritizing our research? How are we uh, ensuring quality of that research and so on? So uh, we are in this process and uh, we'll be subjecting that again to stakeholder consultation and the DG and uh, the, the partners that have organized this forum. We hope that uh, we can present that uh, a draft policy to this 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 team here so that they can also give feedback and then we'll have a policy that really addresses the big big issues that are bedeviling our research and development ecosystem thank you thank you thank you very much director so i will hand over back to the distinguished speaker indeed um, very important ideas thoughts and insights and Fortunately, we have an avenue within the context of the emerging development of the national poli policy for science, technology, and innovation. And many of these ideas will be taken up there in, in view of the fact that even the SCTI platform is dynamic and uh, needs to respond to many different changes, but most importantly, respond to our national context and opportunities therein. And so it's absolutely critical that we see so much encouragement by the fact that so many hundreds of people are still on this uh, platform. On the issue with respect to uh, Dr. Karembu and her ideas, indeed the, um, the importance here within the context of how we're able to make key decisions today from this, um, from this debate. And one of them is, indeed to ensure that we promote the uh, uh, policy environment within the context of coordination and um, interdisciplinary engagement and efforts through what the act has emphasized and now into the policy of uh, science, technology, and innovation and the research policy. And that important role that policy will be within the context of being not only concentric, but um, a structure which brings about the necessary coordination and prioritization. We've heard comments from Mr. Ben Roberts. Indeed, um, Ben, I think that, you know, out of all the things, it's true that um, we have to make far more progress in terms of implementation. We have an array of policies, legislations, regulations, standards. We have different acts and different ministries. 
We have different private sectors, including yours, which is involved in IoT and research and emerging technologies. But maybe one of the decisions we can make here today is to realize the holistic nature of uh, science, technology, innovation. And it's not going to be led by a single person or entity, but by all of us. You're shown uh, great credibility in promoting leadership in Internet of Things, uh, young scientists, movements, and we're calling for a decision by all the leaders that are on this platform today to take up that role of science, technology, innovation leadership in order to promote science. But most importantly, to explain and to uh, discuss and to debate and to dialogue and to provide insights to all stakeholders of this country on how science, technology, innovation is the most crucial and the greatest enabler towards a commerce-driven, inclusive development, so social uh, resilience, self-reliance, and equitable development. And I think that this can't be uh, explained better than uh, individuals on this platform who understand science, technology, understand the role of research in optimization, in efficiency, in productivity, to go out and explain this. Yet another decision that comes to my mind is, um, as one of the uh, participants has mentioned, let us look again at the value chains of communities. I happen to be the chair of the Northern Rangelands Trading Trust, and we're developing several value chains, a value chain on beads, a value chain on on um, other key areas within the context of uh, skills and so on. But what, what is coming out um, tremendously to our insight is that there are so many potential microeconomic efforts and activities and ecosystems that merrily need to be connected to markets in a structured way. And this then calls for county government participation and uh, the definite role it has in creating business ecosystems by way of the productivity, the innovation, the efficiency of policies, legislations, regulations, and standards. If, for example, certain counties lack uh, inputs like water and electricity, it's a challenge to, to ensure that we're able to gain momentum as far as economic activity. Not only do we have to research on priority requirements, but also research on the policy which would create an enabling environment for counties to prosper. And that important role that the county legislature has within the context of how it identifies its sectors based with our national sectors of the bottom uh, up economic transformation agenda of the country and it's identified uh, several sectors. So maybe a decision could be made here that um, this uh, dialogue, this first dialogue, invokes leadership, science, technology, innovation, leadership, and that leadership has the capacity to promote the highest level of diplomacy into the very arteries of policies, legislations, regulations, and standards. Yet another decision within the context of uh, today's event could be the priority, uh, now that we have uh, gotten several sectors by government agenda, to leap in. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is difficult for academia and academic institutions to walk into the gates of industry today. We've seen that um, uh, primarily because of uh, certain issues of trust, primarily because of uh, the, the various uh, competitive engagements and that they hold as far as processes are concerned, as far as uh, competitive is con competitiveness is concerned. And this locks them in, in isolation. It is indeed government's role to bring us all together like it has done today. But I think that a decision going forward is to see to it that um, we put a huge emphasis on the several sectors as is pointed out by government, which include you know, the cotton and textile value chains, the edible oil value chains, the dairy value chains, the leather value chains, rice, tea, the blue economy, minerals, and so on. And really emphasize this uh, from an end-to-end -end ecosystem to the extent that we have um, a value proposition for investment into research, science, technology, innovation. So I think that this couldn't be a better moment, you know, within the context of making a decision by way of uh, our research fraternity to start uh, bringing about um, extensive research in this area 
and for government under Nikosti to consolidate this and uh, to to promote uh, promote it as a value proposition to new economies. I think these are several decisions that we could make, you know, within the context of our community, and uh, this this would take us to the next step by way of um, dialogue and uh, uh, interconnectedness within this uh, platform and ecosystem. Thank you. Yes, again, thank you very much. I don't know, Professor Soma, you want to... Yes, uh, are we able to have uh, Professor Munabu online? I think he was having a, a meeting. Uh, Jocelyn, are you able to uh, check on that? But in the meantime, as we come to the conclusion, I think we have exceeded the time, but probably it was worth it because uh, there are a lot of... Uh, input if we quickly could just uh, the, the, probably the last round uh, take some of the comments which the distinguished speaker can can respond to where applicable any research that depends majorly on funding from outside the country is never sustainable and therefore the government must provide sufficient funding to drive research that addresses national issues next uh, yes uh, on research funding what is the engagement that can be availed to Tibet's in meeting the needs of food security and innovations and how can its resources be utilized in equipping the youth with necessary skills and funds uh, to even set up uh, incubation uh, next uh, when are we developing the national research agenda that is guided and informed by the five key areas of the new government uh, the nra should be on the bottom up model of government nra maybe i don't know what that nra it, it eh? Ah, it's called NRA. It's not a resistance army, at least. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The Secretary kindly comment on the dual learning that is implemented through Germany Chamber of Commerce in uh, some of our CEDAC uh, courses and what we can do to make this sustain the considering. Yeah, one of the beauty of STI sector is that we cut across from kindergarten to primary to high school, and that's why we are getting comments from all the sectors, the universities, the research institutions, the Tibet institutions, secondary schools, up to kindergarten. So it is actually a, a cohesion factor uh, as, as has been used in East Africa uh, through ESTECO. Yeah, the, the comments, the ones I've not read very quickly. Uh, based on what uh, Professor Boga has said, uh, that there's a lot of funding within government, it might be useful to undertake an assessment of the available funds uh, and how they have been utilized over time. Yes, my colleague and moderator, for Sandala, is there. By the way, they are doing it. I think they've done a bit of that, uh, but it needs to be done and then shared with the publics. Uh, probably our next, uh, our next lecture might have that. Yeah, next. Uh, they all, they are, there are private industries out there willing to partner with Tibet institutions in areas uh, next time maybe we need a curtain here eh? country dwell such collaboration in in training trainers uh, training internships attachments how can liwa uh, how can liwa facilitate this arrangement uh, formally under private public partnerships i think the distinguished speaker will talk about on that based on linkage uh, being uh, inaugurated what is the space of graduate of graduate in the in the mentorship of STI yes one of the uh, the the draft priority areas i think is on talent the STI uh, training STI education workshop talent management and the next generation workforce so that agenda we are bringing to the youth to uh, interrogate and tell us or tell everybody where they think they can uh, which space they can occupy then uh, this is a great platform, and indeed it, it expands our perception towards STI. Congratulations, of course. Thank you for that. Next is the, the beginning of uh, the beginning of the breaking silos. Is understanding the relationship and linkages among the STI actors. How are we all relating with each other, strengthening the linkages? Yes, we have just started. Uh, you know, coming together is never an easy. Thing, just like uh, also marriage is not an easy thing for those who have tried it, but we have started somewhere and it's like we have no choice, just like in marriage also. Yeah. Thank, uh, thank Doctor for opening our horizons, our institutions are ready and willing to, uh, to partner with private sectors in terms of training, internships, attachments and so forth. Thank you for that. Uh, next. 
uh, are there mechanisms in place that help individuals uh, from general public to understand their role in the innovation agenda? I think uh, a very good question. We would also want, uh, especially those in the public sector, to take advantage of the STM and streaming target. It's a good forum for engagement, including this one and other forums that uh, uh, will be created. Even one of our key institutions, Kenya, uh, I think has quite some programs, but we have initiated a process that we hope will not die along the, the route. The essence of innovation is uh, in, impact, is impact to the economy. Indeed, there's a big disconnect between the noble innovations conducted by researchers and their impact on the economy. There's need for proper collaboration between you. I think that has been mentioned. The disconnect is there. And that's why we are trying to adopt the whole government approach, uh, the multi-sectoral, multi-agency uh, approach on this. But help us with ideas on how to formulate it because it requires ideas. Uh, and it's good we have started with the, uh, our distinguished speaker who is coming from the uh, private sector. Uh, uh, and the other one is the counties, but they, the counties almost operate like the private sector because they also have their own style. Uh, and it's good for some reggae brought it on board. It's a key, key, key sector. Uh, we have tried, I think we tried to engage with the county government of Kisumu and the structures there are a little bit complicated uh, because today you have this contact person, tomorrow another contact person, the third day when you engage with them, they think you have brought money. So it's like, can you pay for the venue? Can you? So, but we need to get there. It's, it's a little bit complex. Yes. Then, uh, Dr. Tari, kindly. Yes, I hope we uh, What plans does Nakosti have in reaching out to the county governments and parastatos to promote uh, the research and technology and innovation? We are working with the county government secretariat. Uh, they have literally agreed, I think, uh, under the STM mainstreaming, to join the STM mainstreaming performance contract willingly. I think. The target is for ministries, departments, and agencies. Uh, and this time around, I think it was retained in the PC. A number of uh, other targets were retired. Uh, fortunately, the STI target uh, was retained. And the bottom line is that anybody who is contributing to the digital economy, Automation 2030, any MDA, literally needs to be in that target. So there are literally like no exceptions, unless you can prove that you're not contributing to the digital economy of, of, of this country. So. The counties and, and my colleagues, Dr. Njibi, can confirm when we engage with them, one of our points of the MOU is that they will willingly accept to be part of that STM streaming target. With that, now we can engage the rest of the publics because that is, uh, again, the, the bigger silo that Mr. was talking about. So we need to open up, get in the bigger silo, then uh, crush the silo into, uh, into something that benefits all of us. We remain indebted for the good work you you did when you were at event. Yes, that's for Kevin. Can you have that? We remain indebted. It's good to read some of these good things sometimes. <laughs> Not so often that people say good things. Why is that we remain in the... Yeah, Dr. Ali, thank you for the insights that you uh, shared. We remain indebted for the good work you did when you were at Tibet as a PS. Uh, some new institutions have a uh, modern uh, state of their technology that are totally unutilized. And that is true. We are actually aware of that, that Tibet got some funding from you, I think at the World Bank or somewhere, and they got very modern equipment. Uh, one of the things that we asked Tibet that in the STM and streaming target, there are tables. One of them is on documented infrastructure. And we have just done the sample, the information that we got. We tried to list the equipment in universities, research institutions, Tibet institutions. And we hope with that one, somebody can Google the name and be able to locate through ICT that this key equipment is in these Tibet institutions. So give us the correct data, like we are talking about uh, KU, uh, referral stall, they have the cyber knife facility, which is the, I think the second in Africa. So when we capture that and you Google cyber knife equipment facility for cancer treatment in Kenya, it should zero in on the, on the map of Kenya and go straight to KU. So Tibet institutions, a good number of you have now joined the STM in streaming. I think there are over 200 or 300 institutions. We are almost getting 100% uh, turnout on that. When you do that, uh, people will know that we have this equipment at Sigalagala uh, uh, Training uh, College and, and so forth. But okay, he's talking about Kosti collects data on equipment worth 500,000. Uh, How can the information be utilized to open us? Yes, you have captured it well. It's good that you know that we are doing that. This is our first attempt. So give us a little bit of time so that we are able to convert it to something useful to. 
uh, to the sector. How can we effectively implement research, science, technology, and innovation investment in our devolved government? Uh, since uh, if we decentralize RSET, it will it will balance our socio-economic transformation uh, in our county governments in promoting SCA. Can government provide favor of export policies such as? I think this is well noted, and I hope this will form part of the report of today, uh, uh, Dr. Njubi and our team. Uh, I wish to thank Nakosti, Team Levzayawa, or you have even put my name there, for actualizing. <laughs> in, in, it will enhance networking exchange the idea, that's good. Uh, then on the issue of database created by NRF, could we be guided on how to subscribe for the same? I have gone through the NRF website, but I could not locate it. I think the CEO will uh, comment shortly after this. So I think the, the rest will capture them and, and share. Uh, as we come to, uh, or maybe I would uh, request uh, the chief guest or chief speaker, if there are any quick comments on, on those, our time is really running out. Indeed, I'd like to emphasize uh, Tibbet's role within the context of science, technology, innovation by way of its applied and basic research uh, skills and capacities. It's well-endowed institutions with uh, many centers of excellence and its relevant themes you know, within the context of its, if, of its development here again, we've seen many Tibet institutions within the country engage the private sector. I know of an engagement with the Kenya National Polytechnic and uh, a cushion maker manufacturer that uses its CNC machines in order to produce the springs for uh, cushions and various other kinds of key uh, areas. So, so there is a lot of uh, engagement going on uh, we want to emphasize today as a decision that these engagements of, of, are of high value to our prosperity and our economic development. And so we need to create frameworks to encourage them. Mm. The second is um, issues on funding from abroad. Indeed, um, um, it's high time that we uh, in, indigenously develop our own clusters, our own priorities, and collaborate with global opportunities in order to first and foremost get a value proposition for enhancement. And I think that this is critical. Increasingly, this nation is now, after 60 years of independence, understanding its place within the context of its um, local content, regional content, continental content, and world programs, and its uh, diversity in people. The uh, issues with respect to dual learning and CDAC, uh, the primary efforts of government have been to ensure that they align training to the requirements of productivity, innovation, and efficiency. It's for that reason they introduce a competency-based education training, which essentially uh, means to train to standard, something that's measurable, something that industry can identify with, and something that industry can be involved in, in developing its uh, standards in order to ensure productivity, innovation, efficiency. That requires a lot of collaboration between all different stakeholders in order to create a cooperative movement as far as uh, training is concerned. Further efforts of government have been to ensure that um, uh, the entire occupational standards are developed so that they are um, replicated throughout the region, which means that a young person from Kenya could build a ship, for example, in Tanzania and be uh, judged on merit in terms of the standard and skills and competency that the person has, and that gives the mobility a chance. But equally important are the government policies on uh, recognition of prior learning, to be inclusive to traditions, to skills that have been developed over time by families and communities, and to find ways in which they can be extended in terms of certification programs. Equally important is all the investment that has been put within the context of TIBIT. Ladies and gentlemen, on the issues with respect to ICT, indeed, this is an open and interactive environment. Kenya's embraced ICT, and so as much knowledge in terms of m &E is possible as far as research is concerned. The issues with respect to um, government government's roles and its role in STI to promote the collaboration to create the necessary systemic frameworks of policy, legislation, regulation, and standards. But at the same time, develop the infrastructure, the coordination capability, the competencies is a structure and system that promotes a link between supply and demand of research, science, technology, and innovation. 
and uh, this is something that requires collective action and collective leadership. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I, yeah, we hope that uh, that brings us to the end of this uh, great session, the inaugural distinguished public lecture. Uh, I guess there's nothing left uh, for us to say. Now, at a quick, we will come up with the draft observations of this meeting, as uh, the distinguished speaker had mentioned, like one of which uh, I, I, I captured here on, uh, on the need for holistic approach in the STI sector, the need for value chains, the need to engage counties, the number of what we call the like key observations which might inform uh, the, uh, the next meeting or the next discussions on the same. So we'll do that, I think, in consult consultation with the distinguished uh, speaker. Uh, but allow me to, uh, before I call my colleague, to give a word of thanks, but on my own behalf, really thank and appreciate those of you who have uh, uh, persevered up to this particular point uh, in time. Those of you who have joined despite your, your busy schedule. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. We don't take it for granted. Our board members, uh, high level uh, panel members, uh, CEOs, uh, council uh, uh, persons. Uh, so, uh, with that, uh, allow me to call uh, Mr. Gideon Kirui to give uh, a word of thanks. Thank you. We, we were to give we were to give uh, a gifts to our speakers in this session, uh, but since we are still going upstairs, we will do it upstairs. Those of you who want to join us upstairs for a cup of tea, you're also most welcome. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, DJ. I think uh, my role is to give the photo of thanks and uh, I'll start with uh, the Nakosti management and our board for organizing this series. We know it's the first one and I think it's uh, as noted from the participation, this is a very important event which we'll endeavor to keep going. So as the DG mentioned, this will be something we'll be holding regularly and uh, we thank the board management and all the staff who've participated in organizing this. We also wish to thank our part, uh, partners, uh, uh, NRF and also Kotoda for joining us in these uh, arrangements. And we look forward to partnering, not only with the two of these two institutions, but with more institutions. I know uh, Dr. Karebu mentioned that there's something they are working on. And I think in, as we go forward, we'll engage with them and see whether they can join us in uh, our, our next series. We also wish to thank uh, the eminent persons who are here with us, uh, represented here by Professor Asome, and those who are online for honoring our invitation to join us in this series, and uh, for making this uh, a, a very insightful discussion um, through their contributions. We also thank our peers, represented here by Dr. Givenger, for joining us in this series, and also bringing in the government uh, input into this as uh, the representative of uh, the Ministry of Education. Uh, and for our keynote speaker, uh, Professor Desai, thank you for honoring our invitation and also for the very insightful discussions which you've had. And uh, this has set the pace, this being the first one, it has set the pace for the next speakers and for us as organizers on going forward. Uh, finally, for our participants, those who are here and those who are online, this would not have been a success without your presence, because we could have done all the rest, brought in the guests. If there was nobody to speak to, then it would not have been a success. So on behalf of those who are online, uh, I want to request those of us who are here physically to give a round of applause to all these uh, people who have made this a success. And uh, finally, we thank the almighty God for enabling us to have this uh, session. Uh, we've had an each free. Uh, usually we have, uh, when we have online things, some of that's the day technology fails you. And I'm glad that today we're able to sail quite uh, comfortably. And uh, in honor of that, I wish to invite one of us to do the closing prayer. I'll invite uh, Mr. Banakari. He happens to be a pastor. <laughs> To close with us uh, for us with our word of prayer Karib. unless the dg still has to end it yes we can be absolutely for the word of prayer. okay let's believe together for the word of prayer the last thing god we thank you 
We worship your name, God, because of this moment. Thank you because of the good time and quality time that you've given us, O oh God. As an acoustic team and our partners, Jehovah King of Glory, to have such a successful event, Jehovah Lord. We thank you for indeed it's because of your intervention and because of your presence, God of glory, that we've been able, God of glory, to finish this activity successfully. We thank you, Father, for our guest. Thank you for very insightful Jehovah King of glory speech that has given us. We thank you, Lord, that may you continue God of glory, giving him wisdom so that he can, can continue Jehovah King of glory, uh, giving more Jehovah God to the society in the name of the Lord. We thank you for your goodness. Have your way, Lord, even as we, as we disperse this, our Lord, be with us, walk with us, Jehovah King of glory, Continue, Jehovah, nourishing us, Jehovah King, for the glory and honor of your name. We thank you and honor you. In Jesus' name, God, we pray. Amen.